pay continue. So I just pretty much uh, tried to explain, and I think I've done a decent job here of explaining why I have a, some um, some doubts that uh, Charles Morton and Elizabeth Pratt were the parents of Charles Kerr. And I had more. I had some doubts before I saw this journal, but after seeing this journal, I have much more. And I even have doubts now that Charles Kerr was this, the natural son of Charles Morton, even though Tatlow says flat out that he believes that uh, Charles Kerr was his natural son. But I look at the marriage dates, and I only see uh, one person in Charles Morton's life that could have been young enough to uh, be the mother of Charles Kerr and, um, and and at the time Charles Morton was of course married to that individual Elizabeth Pratt's cousin and living with them in the same household and unless uh, uh, Mary Savile was just just fine and dandy and happy to see her cousin uh, and Tr and Dr. Morton sowing their wild oats together and and forming a family uh, prior to her death, unless she was happy and content to see that happen and raised no complaints and made no moves to start a divorce or anything of that nature and had no problem whatsoever with her cousin, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And, you know, unless we're willing to believe that, it's hard for me to believe that it was uh, Charles Kerr was born as uh, a as uh, the son of both Elizabeth Pratt and Charles Morton. And another thing to consider is the fact he's being called Charles Kerr here. And we have no reason why he would be called Charles Kerr here at all whatsoever, at all. If he was born Charles, I mean, maybe Charles uh, Morton, you know, we can think of it, Charles Morton may have, um, you know, one point, maybe after Mary Berkeley's death, um, got a Mrs. Kerr or <coughs> Miss Kerr pregnant, and uh, Charles Kerr was baptized as Charles Kerr, and um, then uh, finally, you know, he grew up and all that, all that stuff, and you know, Charles Morton started to um, take responsibility for his son, or maybe he was involved. You know, you, you, we don't know if he. I can't say he never did, right? except for just not own up to it at one point, um, if at all, under this scenario. Um, that's the only possibility I could see that Charles could be the natural father, but I, I'm have really, really confused as to why um, Murray, Lady Savile, would think it was okay for Charles Morton to have a full, uh, you know, sexual relationship and a child with her own cousin living in the household as, as help. So I, I, that's, that's my point of contention there. And that's why I say there may be a fourth marriage. There's a gap between Mary Berkeley's death in 1755 and uh, the marriage between Charles Morton and Lady Savile in 1767. And, it, I, you know, Charles Kirk could have been, it seems like it's a little bit early, but, you know, maybe he could have been born as early as 1766. But that, you know, again... That would make him in um, the late 1780s there, um, over 20 while he was going to college. Uh, I guess it's still within an acceptable range. It's still kind of slow as far as getting started in life, I think. I'm not an expert on 18th century English, uh, what most 18th century English young men did when they had their career started at that point, but... You know, it seems possibly conceivable that maybe Charles, but, but then, it, you know, then still, I, I still don't have a good explanation as to why he wouldn't just simply be called, not Charles Kerr, but Charles Morton, or where the name Kerr came from. Uh, maybe he was always called Charles Kerr, and that was just his name, kind of like calling me James Anthony. Um, don't know, but um, I... I'm more let you know. I want to see some outside records besides uh, Tatlow, who could have overheard uh, Dr. Morton always calling him Charles Kerr, if his name really was Charles Kerr Morton, always calling him Charles Kerr, and therefore he he calling him Charles Kerr. I want to see 
an, a, you know, a school record of you know, who was it was attending Hacking College. If I can find that out, and if it's listed as Charles Kerr, then I'm going to know absolutely without a doubt uh, this is an adopted uh, individual. Almost, almost without a doubt. And I'm still going to do the justice of getting a DNA test, no matter what my opinion is, just, just to just to debunk what, uh, not for the purpose of debunking what, I, I'm not trying to debunk anything, it just doesn't seem very likely at this point. Either debunk or support <laughs> what uh, John Tatlow's suspicions were, and if he was right, well, he's, he's a genius, right? Okay, um, and again, I, like I'm saying, there could be some things I'm not considering uh, that I just don't, some piece of information I don't have. I have a lot of different records, but it doesn't mean I have every single piece of information about Charles Morton that, that exists. There are tons of archives out there that I haven't even had a chance to look at. Okay, I'm going to continue now. So, this is in 1792, and it says, In September, Dr. Morton, having great reason to be dissatisfied with my uncle, and this is John Tatlow's mem memoirs talking about his uncle William, who owed Dr. Morton a great deal of money and showed no intention of paying either principal or interest, determined to call to close all connection with him and among other steps thought proper to withdraw my uncle's power turning over his Irish estate and to make over the power immediately to me, John Tatlow accepting my brother only as my security and making my salary fixed one of 114 pounds a year which is equivalent to my former salary and poundage okay so Dr. Morton seemed like a first a little bit too prudent, but later on he seemed to kind of be reasonably generous, and now he, when he, when he, when he thinks he can trust you, he, he, he treats you right, I guess. I guess I gather it sounds like right now, in 1792, uh, John Tatlow here is living a comfortable life. I'm just going to keep going forward and see if there's anything else. Yes, okay. 1799. On the 10th of February, 1799, an event occurred highly important to me and my family. What is that event? That is the death of Dr. Charles Morton. Uh, there are numerous sources for that date. There's no doubt about it. Uh, not, not only is it in this journal, but it's also in several magazines, Dictionary, National Biography. That's a slam dunk. Absolutely positive. Um, even the histories and antiquities of Twickingham, the book that you can see at Google Books, even has him being buried there in 1799. There's another Charles Morton that appears in that book, and that other Charles Morton is uh, Charles, Carr's, Charles Carr's son, Charles Morton. And we'll have more details about that, a very tragic death for um, Charles Morton's grandson, but um, uh, a little bit mysterious, too, actually, and some clues also. And I guess I... Um, well, I'll go over this, and I'll, I'll actually go into more details of that, because there's a, a little part in there that uh, seems to be a clue and has me wondering a little bit that I didn't mention before, so I hope I don't forget it. Okay, I guess I'm going to stop so I don't lose this, and then start the next section, which will be the account of 1799.